Okay. So. Back screen? No, that's looking like it should. Now then, quick glance at the Technics. Yes, yes, everything seems to be working out. Hey, Steel, welcome. So happy to catch you that early here. Okay, so we're back after a bunch of goodness that has happened here. I have finally found access to the caverns. I've assessed the situation and I gotta say, it's brilliant. I'm going to explain a little bit more in detail when we are here and uh, set ourselves down a little bit more thoroughly. So let's see. So, I want to check how this whole thing comes together here. So, which guild was that again? <laughs> oh damn, I can only remember that I had agreed to found a guild. I feel like a typical politician that has forgotten a, 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 a important appointment. So, <laughs> what kind of guild was it? Luckily we can check out which guild has been established, so the metalsmiths, those are next door. We already have these uh, marked off. I know that. The crafts dwarf, that's those uh, guys over there. I already did that too. Or, or did I? Wait a sec. No, no, we don't have the crafts dwarfs. These are new. So let's check this out. Here we got, no, that's the crafts dwarfs. Oh, I got this one wrong. That's the metalsmiths. We got the farmers new, so that's the new bunch here. Okay. Let's redo that. We got the Farmer's Guild new game, please. Stop confusing me. Alrighty, so what did I say again? Farmers, right? Gosh. As if it would be too easy if the already formed guilds would be on top of the list. No, 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 no. That's that's not for us overseers, otherwise we would get we would get too lazy. Okay, so I like the looks of this. I, I like this uh pattern thing that we got going on there. So what kind of stones do I stockpile so far? I got chalk and what's that supposed to be? I think it was mudstone, wasn't it? So we only have access to grey and uh brown. So the big question now is, do I have enough mudstone for this joint here? Yes! Awesome! You guys rock! <laughs> Literally. So, we can floor that thing here. That's a piece of good news. Because they want to have it uh, at least worth 2012 bucks. So, we got to work on that. By the way, do I have dedicated engravers? Yes, I do. All oh, novices. Mmm, wonderful. There. We should really engrave a bit more then. The charcoal making has been completed. That's terrific news. Because we got we got big plans for tonight. I, I really want to go big today. But first let's uh, let's take care of the clerical work. Oh my god, this guy sucks. Oh crap. So we we really need to take to take action against that mayor. That's the that, that's the Making anvils is only possible with iron. Period. We don't have any iron here. Also period. Dude. Oh. Alright. So the best way to deal with this now is to set up a justice system ASAP. So those poor people don't get their brains hammered out of their skull only because they weren't able to produce something we don't are not able to produce. Oh, noblemen. I hate them. Alrighty. So, justice system. Where is the prison going to be? Um, I'm also considering putting up a, a drawbridge over his uh, over his bedroom. And create a funny little accident. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. <laughs> so, you're the real first damn pesky mayor, aren't you? Okay. 
So. Judging from the looks of it, we have this floor here still open. So we're going to transform that into our dungeon. Let's do this. I'll use this as the apartments for the captain of the guard. Because that's the only thing I can really um, possibly think of. Because if I remember correctly, breaking a, a mandate is a prison sentence thing, and not a beating uh, sentence thing. So, well, if we arrange it correctly, it can boil down to something really harmless that somebody is uh, taking a little bit of a vacay here uh, from time to time in the prison when the mayor has his fits again. And we're, and we're going to lock up somebody to, to calm down the mayor, you know, something like that. So, to make the, the prison stay as amenable as possible, we're going to lay down Bilon bars. The good stuff. Hey. Okay, okay, okay. This is, uh... You know, I had completely different plans for tonight, but okay. I'll take that one as well. Oh man, noblemen, they're, uh, they're a real pain. Okay, so uh, what kind of... Uh, we are going to take mudstone here. So some monsters in the caverns are fighting. Nothing I need to worry about. I do need to keep an, a regular eye on the caverns though. Because, you know, we don't want to get ambushed here by, by something in the, out of the dark. Okay, that was enough exactly enough uh, stuff to work with buy the brick I like it so this is going to be the guard captain's departments and this is going to be the prison cell that we're going to roll with this is going to be only the a very very uh, basic setup there because we we are going to have to set it up really hastily we have quite some urgency behind it. The moment the mayor is uh, the mayor's uh, mandate is fulfilled, he's going to sentence somebody to prison time. And if we don't have a prison until then, until then he's going to sentence them to a beating, and uh, that wouldn't be good. That wouldn't be good. Beatings often end quite bad. People get scarred for life or or other horrible things happen i don't know do we have a weapon rack or anything like that no these are custom made here in uh fortress revered revered oh god i i always pronounce that word wrongly i i looked up the pronunciation of that word now five times it's revered somehow my brain always wants to mingle it to something different sorry Okay, so furniture, um, we're going to roll with a silver armor stand and a silver weapon stand. I, I find that quite fitting to the captain of the guard, as these are quite pure metals, you know. So, I mean, the good part about that is uh, going to be we have a justice system up and rolling quite quickly. Usually I wait way longer than that until I set this up but uh, you know it is as it is let's make the best out of it obviously the dwarves of uh, of of fortress revered suffer from insanity that might be the actual hidden problem of this area here because it's quite obvious for our mayor let's look up the name for our mayor um, call that he's He's wanting something that we cannot make, you know? That is, by, for me, a pretty good definition of madness to be on a train like that. So we gotta be careful if other people of this fortress slip away into insanity. Of course, this is only fluff talk, but I, I personally love to spin a little bit of a story around my, um, around my fortresses, you know? That makes them more lively and uh, more more interesting. So we're going to engrave that prison cell, we're going to make that hell of a prison cell, you know, 
the prison cell of all prison cells. And let's bring up the captain of the guard. Mm, yeah, well, no real... Um, I, I really hate it that you cannot look up their social skills here in this table. Because the game obviously thinks that the captain of the guard is more of a military kind of person, but he's also going to be the person who's doing all the, uh, all the, um, what's it called again? The, uh, talking. Ah, oh, I'll, I'll look it up in a minute. I'll have a brain fart right now. <laughs> so, let's put the peasant up to this task. I'm, um, ah, uh, well, I really don't know the word right now. So, we could. Anyways, um, bedroom. So the captain of the guard is, by all means, just like a uh, like any other nobleman. So we'll have to assign all these things to the captain of the guard in the dining hall and the weapon rack as soon as it is ready. I think we should be golden then. We're just missing the cap the, the racks, right? Oh. Which obviously seem to be already made. Let's check this out. People here seem to be very, very uh, quick in their work. Yeah, cool. So we're going to put up these racks, of course, uh, in the in the chamber where we're going to uh, do the interrogations. Hell. I was, I, I knew it was a word that I actually know, but sometimes interrogation, or it's the interrogation room. The captain of the guard does the interrogations, and that's why he has to be a good talker. Well, my brain is back online, obviously. Okay, let's see if we got that all up and running. So, our fortress captain actually wants a prison of... Ten cells. Oh, I hate it when they come with their royal desires. And the worst thing is that this captain of the guard will be unhappy until we have ten prison cells. Ugh. Okay, but whatever. We're going to work with what we got for now. I'll put up the dungeon over here. And now when that mandate goes down as a failure, which it utterly has to, that person who's going to get sentenced is going to be locked away in that little room here and it's all gonna be fine because we're going to make it nice and cozy in here with a bed and a chair you know everything you need to live off of which is really important for a prison um, here, prepared meals, and as soon as the other engraving stuff is done, we're going to put up uh, the rest of the stockpile zones. Okay. So, that's one luxury prison cell. I don't think I can afford to uh, staff out all of them like that for now. Although, thinking of it, it ain't that much of a luxury for this fortress at least. Because we got Billon actually as much as we want to. We just need to cave out a little bit more of that tetrahedrite and then we can transform two chunks of tetrahedrite into Billon like that. We just need to add some charcoal. Done. So. It's actually not that much of an issue now that I think more closely about it. So probably we can make this prison work like that. I mean, I personally like to have luxurious prisons because that that nothing nothing uh, shows your superiority more than when you're able to host your prisons like they're uh, like it's actually a luxury apartment. So wait a sec, this is not working as intended. So we got to change those designators a little bit. Aquiferous stone is a menace of uh, Fortress Revered, so we got to work out a different plan for this. Okay. But I'd say this is a good compromise. We're going to go and let those uh, prison cells snake alongside of the 
forges. So, yeah, let's go like that. So this will be a pretty large installation after all, now that I think more closely about it, but I also do like it. So, that's the damp stone issues. And now that we got some of these things nailed down, we might as well start to get a little bit megalomaniac. So all that sweet, sweet Drautha stuff is rotting down here, you guys. So turns out our our stockpile management is not is not on par with the butchering downstairs here. That's that's tragic. So we can't work as I want to work here. Hmm. Wait a sec. Did I did I really not set up any butcher or anything down here? Ah, okay. Now that explains a lot why why oh no down in ah, that here they are. Okay. Okay. So um well we're going to make a different uh, approach for that. I already got a plan. So turns out we're not going to um store all the cages here. That's all. So the cagey stuff has to uh, go from here to there. So the humans are here for a trade. Nice. Let's see, what can I trade actually? That's a good question. We haven't dug out too many new gemstones in the time being. So, well, uh, oh gosh. It's just that one gem bin with 1,400 gems, and uh, that's all, so... You guys, you came for a naught. The doors of uh, this fortress, they closed for this year. Come back next year, probably. So... Basically, we're going to relocate our, our cage slaughtering thing here, in a way that... Um, ugh, Okay, that we're going to um, store all the cages over in this room, and then we're going to kill off the stuff over here, and then hopefully it'll be hauled quickly to the butcher and the tanner, and then it's going to get processed at the kitchen. We'll see how good that works. At the end of the day, plans are only uh, as good as they withhold the reality, or withstand the reality. So a kitten has adopted a dwarf. Let's check that out if this is going to be an issue. Oh god, there's uh, so freaking many kittens. Let's kill them before they uh, before they become a nuisance here. <laughs> hey Jeff, welcome. Happy to see you. So we're going to slap that down here animals animals so all the cages will land now here and uh, obviously I need some fresh chain so of course the madman has been re-elected everything else would have been too easy so I got to check out the personality of Cole a little bit more closely because we're it seems like we're going to get be stuck with this guy and I I want to know what uh, wicked things he, he pulls out of his sleeve next, so... You can always check out the, the preference, preferences of your noblemen, because these will totally tell you what they'll, uh, what they'll order from you. So crossbows, large gems, anvils, and he likes gremlins for their mischief. Yeah! Yeah, so he's actually enjoying to... Uh, to um, after all, I wouldn't be too too surprised if this guy would be sitting uh, in his office at the end of the day and chuckle how smartly he's sentencing people into prison uh, here. Uh, that kind of person you are. Okay, well, meet the mayor of this wonderful fortress. 
Okay, well, we'll deal with that one day later. So, the stone crafter is slipping into depression. We got that one dude, which is, uh, you know, sometimes dwarves are just extremely susceptible to being um, struck by, by depression and the like. It's part of their personality structure, you know? Everybody's born with a different uh, personality structure, and so are dwarves. And some of them are really like uh, like snowflakes. If they ever get traumatized once in life, that possibly leaves them scarred for life, and then uh, they, they never go happy again, no matter how good life is treating them. Just like in real life. Some, some people just break under the pressure. So... more kittens were those the ones that I just uh, took care of yes yes good so or our failure down here um whoops Ugh, stray kitten skull so our failure here showed me that I need to uh, shut down these places because nothing good will come out of that no no that won't be working out okay so back to the smithies i need chains a lot of them so let's check on out how is our how is our situation with fuel right now and metals so we got quite a decent amount of build on bars charcoal could be better so well but it's enough to produce let's say 20 chains i'd say that's a decent amount of chains and uh, let's start with producing a mass order of Bilon chains. There we go. And at the same time, I'm pretty sure we need to take care of more logs and more charcoal has to be produced. So there's a couple of trees that we can take down. That's good. So this layer of the caverns has been pretty, pretty good to us so far. I stay on the watch though, because these things, they can swing over so ever so quickly. And, uh, you know, the moment a, a forgotten beast will show up, I'm not too sure. There is another, uh, another mummy dwarf here, so no mummy dwarfs in the military, my friend. So Sigun, you are going to get replaced. Enjoy time off. I already mentioned it in my last stream. It's just the problematic that uh, they're carrying around their baby during duty. And uh, if they're going into combat, that baby is going to be traumatized by the combat around it. And uh, often this results in haggard children that uh, go from one tantrum to another. Because they never uh, they never got, got over the, the stuff that has happened while, while their parents were on military duty. I mean, who would carry around their baby while they're killing monsters in the caves, after all? That sounds like a shitty idea in the first place. <laughs> Alrighty. So, let's see. We got a nice arrangement of uh, cage traps here. I mean... It is technically not really efficient, because the most likely path the monsters will take is the straight line. So these are mostly decoration, actually. We we could change that by... Oh yeah, let's do this. This is a really easy um, improvement. We're going to slap down one pillar here. And this already will make it a lot more... Um, a lot more powerful. In terms of... Uh, pathing that the monsters can take so they are now either forced to take this or that way and uh that results in a higher chance of the traps to get sprung at least i i think it should uh, work out like that what the monsters actually do that's on a completely different sheet of paper <laughs> so If I'd be able to access these waters somehow safely, I could be actually even fishing. Could you imagine that? Okay, it seems like the logs have been transported away quite quickly already. You leave them out of... Uh, let them just do what they do for a moment and uh, just like that. It's all done. This is a very, very, um, this is a very, very busy fortress. They're uh, getting their stuff done down fast. I like it. 
So we're going to restock our wood stockpiles. So I also checked these uh, upward uh, ramps here. So when we flick upstairs, we got this nice large planes here. It's really, it's really large. And the best part about it is that I noticed when we flick one, one more layer upstairs, you notice it has all a solid, um, a solid roof above it. That means if we'd be building some walls here, we'd be truly walled off. That means safe from the rest of the caverns. We could really conquer a pretty big part of the caverns here because uh, as it stands, so I'll pause here for a moment. If you check out this area here, I go one floor upstairs. So it's all also solid floor. So I think, yeah, here's the first opening. So if we'd be walling off ourselves here and here, and uh, success successively on these ends here and there and uh, all these ends, we'd be not needing that airlock anymore. We could be totally eliminating that. So, ooh, a tantrum. That ain't good. So, let's see. Well, at least when he's tantruming, he's uh, breaking the law, and that means we can't take care of his uh, behavior. I just hope he won't murder anybody on the, on the way there. So let's complete the furniture of prison cell number one. So this is a standard prison cell for, uh, for our fortress here today. I like it. My prisoners are totally getting pampered here. <laughs> You know, but there's a, a kind of a logic for me behind that. Because actually, if they are already um, breaking the law and being, uh, being problematic dwarves in the first place, it is absolutely helpful to give them a cool time out where they can uh, just, uh, just uh, chill out and all. Oh, that's not good. This is most likely a lethal injury. Bruising uh, the upper spine's nervous tissue. Well, let's check out how our wood burner is holding up. So, um, where the hell is the person that we were talking about? So, lore. It's always such a pain to find the person in question, but it's uh, you get used to it. So, let's see. Injured. So, his neck is torn open. Uh, well, he, he, he might be not dead yet, but somebody has to put this uh, guy down. So, he's now picking up a fight with the planter. So... This guy is pretty bad news right now. He's starting fist fights left and right. And the worst part about tantruming dwarfs and, uh, and all is that they they grow better at combat <laughs> isn't it fun so we're going to schedule a uh, a meeting with the captain of the guard you have been misbehaving my friend so let's do a proper imprisonment I mean, technically, we're far away from being done with that guy, because the worst part is now only starting, because, uh, you know, we, we got to accept the fact that this guy is mentally quite broken. Most likely he's going to, uh, to, throw, uh, to, to throw stuff like that now quite regularly. So we might think of uh, a per more permanent solution for this fella, but for now, he's on he's on the first swing, you know. Let's see. There we go. So for for some odd reason, I cannot read the first interrogation report. I had that lately as well that the first one wasn't uh, somehow not clickable, but we already know that this guy is. Uh, Wait a sec. No sentence pending because he's insane? Is that the thing? Oh no. 29 days in prison. Alright. 
I was already, uh, okay. I would have been, uh... That would have been quite shocking to me. So, it's important that we put up the, the second prison cell already, because as you see, it is totally necessary. Troglodytes, eh? Ugh. So... Let's see if those troglodytes are going to go towards our base as well. I just want to complete the interior for this place. And uh, or or Mr. Haggard is now is now sitting in his cage. Okay, so oh boy, that's that's on the same height layer, but uh, pretty far away from my place. I mean. Most of the things that might penetrate the airlock will get stuck in all the traps. And obviously stuff is slaughtering uh, one another here. Okay, so let's see how well that works out. He was very interested near a fine, tastefully arranged door. Mm -hmm, okay. So let's make sure that this other place is shiny as well. Lots of dead oak dudes. But he's uh, he's mentally haggard, so... Oof. But there you see, here's uh, all these good things around him are, are making feel goods. So probably, maybe we can get him off the brink of uh, this by, by sentencing him uh, to regular prison spa. Um... Visits. So let's slap down the, the luxury floor everywhere. I really love the fact that we're going to make this a uh, pretty, pretty fancy place. So I'm pretty sure we don't have enough tetrahedrite in the long run to uh, get the whole thing down as I want to do. Okay. So, thirsty and unconscious. Do we have no orderlies here? Is that probably the case? Well, one dude is the only orderly we got here. Okay, good thing that I double-checked. So, we're going to assign some people here. To make sure people... People get some water here from time to time. Or booze, whatever. But that didn't look too good. Okay, so finally they're uh, filling the stockpiles also with things that actually contain something. Is this here, well... It's always an odd job. Oh yeah, I, I also need to... I forgot totally. The third stockpile necessary were bugs. Here. But it's really important that we forbid bins here so only one mug gets uh, tossed on the ground here. It's not as if they need tons of these. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll end up with, uh, with a whole bin for every prisoner. And that would be a little bit much, wouldn't it? So we're going to go full art attack on these. It's going to be a good training for our, um, for our dabbling stone engravers. So... Oh, wait a sec. I, I totally forgot. Dungeon can and can be just like that doesn't matter. Here we go. Who are you in Dwarf Fortress? Um, well, the perspective on that is uh, different on whoever you ask, but uh, most people, most long-term players I saw referred to, uh, to as the player 
as the overseer, which is um, a a nice term because it avoids going going too specific. Because um, some people, some players go to the point where you know the title was slaves to Armok, and uh, you know Armok was, sounds pretty much like a dwarven deity. But uh, as uh, as a matter of fact, it was an inside joke between the developers. But whatever. Um, some people say that you're per that you're playing out of a uh, god's perspective or out of an overseer's perspective. You can you can choose that for yourself. But uh, I like these two um, two points of view a lot. So we've discovered more ore down there, uh, down door. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's pretty hard accessible, but, uh, can somebody get this guy some food and drink, please? So, what is not working out as intended here? Well, it's just an overload, work-wise. Damn. Well, gotta say, on the other hand, if he'd be dying down there, I'd be not too worried about him. <laughs> so, uh, what did mess him up so hard, though? So, Melville Scar labored. So, who is Melville Scar labored? Let's check this out. Or who was? One fellow dwarf. So, the death of a fellow dwarf pushed him over edge like that. I mean, this was literally the only thing that he's, uh, he has a long-term memory of. And uh, after that, nothing bad happened in his life. Like I said, quite the snowflake. Some of them are, at least. But it's actually not bad to have one dwarf like that in your fortress uh, some from time to time. Because this allows you to um, have open cases you can use for your justice system to, to sniff out spies. Because you can only interrogate people if you actually have a crime to, um, to, to go after. And if there is no crime in your fortress, there's uh, no way to interrogate random people. But now we have some misorderly conduct, and now my captain of the guard can can go around and ask any random visitor of our fortress, Were you around when that dwarf was beaten? And sometimes they are spies, and they suddenly get nervous and spill their beans in front of the captain of the guard, and you, and you get informed about some espionage uh, things that were working against your fortress. The game's really deep in that regard. <laughs> so, we got six prison cells here. That's uh, not enough yet. Not enough yet. So, let's crawl alongside, not there, no, no. I want to avoid as much as I can to go and uh, interfere with the space of the of the forges because I really think that we are going to require a lot of that room. So I'll rather try to build my prison cells around this direction here. So damp stone located. So turns out we were only able to add two more um, projects to our, or two more prison cells to our, to our project. So my well, we're slowly getting there. We're slowly getting there. So let's beautify this. I mean, actually, I wasn't planning to do justice and prisons today, but, you know, one insane mayor later, I had to do this. Because the problem is, if I don't have that justice system running, I mean, I could just ignore the mandates of the mayor, but then the, ma the mayor would slowly uh, go so nuts that he's tantruming all day, 
and uh, that's also no solution. So I need to, I need to put people in behind bars, punish them because they were not fulfilling work orders that we can't fulfill. This guy is a menace. So. So I've decided that those people that have to spend time in the prison cells at least gonna have a really, really good time there, you know. That's the least I can do. And it's raining bitter sludge out there again. Good old waters of pain. Never gonna let you down. Okay, speaking about never let you down, um, what is uh, going on over here? So the Farmer's Guild Hall still needs to be fully... Um, fully uh, introduced with, with money. <laughs> so, okay. We need to make something happen here. We got two Bilon's uh, statues. One is of OK Copper Points, or OK Copper Points, I should rather say, but I just can't stop myself from calling him OK Copper Points. Probably really, really terribly bad. A lot of dwarfs here would hate me for that, I guess. So I'm pretty sure that this is not enough to increase the value of the room enough. But since we ain't got no other projects right now, let's see. How's our fuel situation? We got tremendously much Billon. Our entire tet tetrahedrite stockpiles are empty. That's a shame. But, uh, well, we're going to order four more Billon statues. You know, we got the material right now. And therefore, I'll, I'll see to that. So, how, how many... Oh, God. We, we still need so many more. So we got five. Um, let's see. That's gonna be number six, number seven, and number eight. So three more. Usually this is not as much of an issue, but in this fortress, I gotta say, this entire thing is so narrow, you know? It's just uh, everywhere you go, you got to it's all cramped up and, uh, you know, the place is quite uh, exhausting to build uh, in and slapping down an entire, um, an entire prison complex down here is way more challenging than the other things that were brought up here so far, mostly because I don't want to, uh, ruin the, the expansion of the, uh, fortress later down the road. Okay, three more prison cells. That should be doable, shouldn't it? So let's try one. Two. Does that work? Wait a sec. Two. And three. There we go. And four. And five. I, I rather... I'm rather expanding already right now. Because I know by the end of this, we are going to need more than 20 of these. Yeah, you're, you're right. Okay, so... Okay. We did something about the sanity of Ormea, and we did something about the sanity of our Captain of the God. So, who does something about the sanity of me? That's a good question, though. But, jokes aside... I, I think we are on a very, very good spot right now. Our, our food and drink stockpiles are, are only increasing, and the expansion of the city is on a really good spot. I mean, I personally dislike the fact that you have to put up so many prison cells for, um, for the justice system. This, uh, you know... It's numbers-wise quite a uh, quite a insane task every time. So the the stone crafter is not getting any better. It's actually just a matter of time until he's uh, going to accidentally uh, 
do something really terrible in his, uh, in his madness. Oh yeah, of course, I was wrong about that. The Billon bars I was talking about, of course they are not really available. The count here is all the Billon bars that are in the floor as well. The That's really important. So the red number here shows how many of these are bound in buildings, and the white number is depicting how many of them are currently available to you. So we are pretty much out of Bilon here. That's the gist of it. Nothing too worried about. That also means that our entire prison cell expansion project here is a little bit slowed down. So, well, it's okay. I hope my little uh, god, Captain Snowflake, will tag that blow to his ego. We are going to go down in the mines and uh, make sure that we're going to have some more metal to work with now. Because that seems to be, obviously, one of the most important things. So, there's uh, quite, uh, quite, co uh, quite a combat out there. But luckily, we seem to be quite safe in our underground fortress here so far. So, let's see. I don't dare to use auto-mining, in case you're wondering why I'm not doing this. Because I don't want to punch accidental holes into the... into the caverns. So, we're, uh, we're taking it slow here. Just, uh... Just layer by layer. Because this cursed place here is so damn shallow. Where we we really know don't have much room to work with here. And I was recently wondering how much that would influence my my plans with this place. Oh, we got a uh, we got a artifact in the making. I'll see how that'll work on out. So the dude is hauling some chalk together, some logs. We really need some more gemstones, I realize. I need some more money to to get me going. So this guy is asking for cloth. Oh boy, cloth. Mm. So let's see how is the situation with cloth. None. That's bad. So, um, how the hell are you guys managing to be completely out of cloth? Well, we only have one field here so far. Alright, that's really not enough. So, let's plant out more pigtails. Also, this place is somehow managing to be out of materials very, very often. Oh, that's why I, I derped to in, in that regard. Now it makes sense. So we caught a giant cave toad. Nice. I want a rope and chain here as well. So we can slaughter all these uh, caught thingies from down below. Turn them into fine, fine food. Okay, so uh, that does not really make me happy. So we're going to plunder our... Um... No, we're not going to plunder anything because we don't have anything. No! Is this the next doomed dwarf trying to create an artifact? Is that the real curse of this place? No, I don't think so. It's just the uh, result of bad management, but uh, you know. A caravan has arrived. So our our brothers and sisters from the mountain home has arrived have arrived. So probably they can get us the relief that we need. Probably that's going to that's going to help us out. So finished goods in, with six thousand dwarf bucks value. I'm going to have a look at that. Probably it's just going to be an artifact that we don't want to sell anyways. But, uh, well, maybe there's some stuff that we can't sell after all, because I'm quite desperate. And often, these guys bring cloth and leather in their, uh, in their caravan, so there, there might be still hope for those little buggers. Hmm. 
Okay. So, diplomacy, diplomacy. And I I totally want to order cloths, you know? It, it, it seems to be quite obvious that these materials are totally not uh, getting produced enough. So, let's see. Alright. Disorderly conduct for hurting the cat. <laughs> Interesting. So, let's send the manager. And let's have a little bit of a trade. So, I have ordered food, and they are not bringing any... Uh, I ordered coal. They're not bringing any fabrics, so... Ah, <sighs> well was a nice try. So I bet that they're not bringing any plants that we could make into fabric. No, also no. So there is uh, one last uh, chance that we could go for, and that's um, trying to forge things out there and hope that there's something that we can transform into. Yeah, here, 3,000 bucks the ring. Just like I thought. And uh, we're going to toss away some of these low-value gemstones. An offering. So, and, uh, you know, probably we get lucky and get some get some of these materials we can make fabric out of uh, from up there. That's that's really the last, the, the last idea that I got. Because, uh, you know, let's see how's the status here. Well... We do get pigtails, and uh, so did I turn off the automation for these? What's the matter here? Automatically weave all thread. Yeah, all right. So plant processing. Oh, now that explains what's happening here. The farmer's workshops are not processing the fibers into um, into uh, thread, so there's nothing happening here all day long. Yeah, well, that, that totally explains why we don't have any fabric. There's usually a good explanation if a uh, if a industry grinds to a total halt like that. I already assumed that there was something like that amiss. The problem we still have at the same time is that I'm not quite sure if we're going to make it in time, you know? So... We got some wool here. And we... Don't we need to weave wool into thread as well? So, spin thread. I think this is also something that we should do here. Daily. Okay. Let's do that and see if that'll save our poor fella here in time. Let's do a manual infusion and hope that this will get the trick done. So here we got pigtail thread. This should automatically trigger these, but probably not. We've thread into cloth, and uh, obviously... Yeah, well... It should be triggering any moment. Poor little fella. I hope he's going to be fine. And uh, we're also going to have to spin thread at least once. Because all those uh, animal hairs... Uh, well, But I think you cannot tailor out of these. If I remember correctly, you cannot tailor out of these. So we cannot weave that here. So probably because the uh, hospital is hogging that. So, the planter is still... Okay. 
Oh, uh, well, we can't really uh, raise down that thing, so, okay. Situation ain't over yet. Situation ain't over yet. So... We obviously have still some time. So, right, the glassmaker has been sentenced now to be in prison because of the anvil mandate. We failed to make the anvil. This guy's a madman. He's dangerous. Ah, here finally. We're now finally weaving some cloth. So hopefully our, our friend here will go, will be fine in a, in a second. So, let's see. If we get lucky, he's going to wheeze off the moment the stuff is uh, ready. Mm, well, right now, it's still getting old. Stonecrafter is having his uh, his fit. So let's see. Otherwise, well, if it's a plant-based threat thing, uh, then well. It's hard to micromanage that for me right now. Oh no. So it looks like he wants plant fiber. No, wait a sec. Plant fiber? We already have plant fiber. So probably we need some spider silk fiber. Okay, so we're going to allow the collection of webs once. Probably that'll be the trick. Oh, thank you, Hankosha. That that's really so nice. <laughs> well done, and uh, thanks for your kind works. Uh, kind words works exactly. Your puns have distracted my senses. <laughs> So, a ban on exports. The export of anvils is uh, is for prohibited. No, you shall not take more anvils. Of course not, you madman. We only have one. Alright, turned out it was uh, cave spider silk that this little fellow required. And uh, it seems to be not all he needs. So, rough color. That's a indicator for for uncut gems, so we don't have any gems left. How's that happening? Cut gems. I I do have a designator. Oh yeah, I know how that can can happen. So let's see if we cannot dig out a rough gem here somewhere. You're welcome. <laughs> Arpa AI, hi there. Happy to see you. And thanks for the follow. You guys are really, really knowing to how to lighten up my day. So. Yeah, yeah, you are you you are among friends of puns here at Icon's place, so make yourself at home. You already deserve a place at the table of legends. So, okay, we we need some gemstone. That's what we need now. We need to save that kid. Damn, we've lost so many already. So, let's see. Do we have some gemstone down here that's not totally suicidal to pick up? You know? What is this place? Gemstone is a very, very rare resource uh, at this uh, at this fortress. Hey there, Siv. Uh, well, puns happen naturally, or or they don't happen. You know, that's at least how it is for me. Sometimes I I, I almost can't stop because it's. Uh, it's like a, uh, I'm able to torture my, my peop the people listening to me with a never-ending stream of uh, dumbness, and uh, sometimes I, I can't think of any. 
<laughs> okay, so um, terribly enough, I I feel like I'm not seeing any gemstone wherever. It's always like that. When the life of one dwarf is on the line, it seems like there's no gemstone anywhere in any wall. Oh boy. I mean, technically we should have some still, but I know how this works. It does now take a while until these bins have been hauled back from my trade depot. And uh, I also feel like I, I, I don't have enough uh, gemstone to begin with, all right? How could I have enough gemstone? So here, this is the thing that I'm talking about, which is most likely suicide. It's nice ruby, but it's also damp rock. And the last time I uh, I mined something like that, where there was damp rock, there was uh, something else going on. So this here is hopefully safe, because it's no damp rock around it. It could also spell the end of Fortress Revered, so we'll see about that. So, uh, yeah, luckily enough, no uh, no terrible things were housing this little thing. If there's uh, a designator like that, there's probably a demon inside there, or a, a messenger from the gods, or, or an artifact, nothing dangerous. There can be very, very many different things that can happen when you go for that. But, uh, you know, right now... I don't want to risk the life of anybody, so this kiddo is receiving one kick-ass item here. Or is it a kid even? I don't know. But uh, the this is one of the most valuable gemstones uh, this fortress have ever has ever possessed, you know? So, uh, yeah. But he, he's again not happy, so rough rubies are not enough. So I need more cloth of that, I guess. So, leather skin. Ah, here we go. So, we, gosh. This feels like I am sitting on an entire shopping list that just doesn't stop. But luckily, we got us a nice little cave toad that we can slaughter here. Brilliant. Seventy plus DF streamers. My god, so many people stream Dwarf Fortress. Jeez. It's amazing. I only recently started streaming here on uh, uh, on Twitch. So here we go. Nicely military slaughtered giant toad. That should bring us some uh, some meat to work with. Okay, the butchery is already on it. Okay, that's one big boy. Look him hold that thing. So I really hope that our that that the uh, that this guy is making it because I let him already wait there quite a long time, preparing all the stuff he requires. Would be a shame if we'd be not making it. So Tan hide, go go. Tan this thing quickly. All right, the giant cave toad leather is uh, made, and uh, you know, there we go. So right now, getting hauled from A to B, and uh, gems shining, cloth three. He he mentions cloth twice, so um, yeah, we we got to collect webs one more time here. Damn, this guy is so demanding. Oh. Yeah, I guess the uh, Steam release did so freaking much for that. So, we've read it to Silk. But I mean, completely deservedly. I, as much as I am a, uh, a roguelike player and I, I don't mind ASCII, I was never able to use ASCII for a fortress building game. That was just beyond me. You know, obviously my little brain has its limitations and that's where I hit the limit. So even more cave spider. I wonder what that guy is actually up to. I mean, it's a stone worker's thing. 
So it's most likely going to be a bit of furniture. Let's see, he's hauling up Billon. Oh gosh, he's finally started to build. Alrighty. The worst part about that, he's possessed, so that means we're not going to have any expert on anything after this uh, thing here. <laughs> I watched them, but I had no clue what was happening there. I I personally find the uh, ASCII graphics of, uh, of OG um, Dwarf Fortress also quite hard to read, admittedly. And that's coming from somebody who has been playing... Uh, roguelikes in that with the, with these graphics since my teenage years you know so do we have more than one woodcutter employed no we don't why i don't know we should change that okay so if we'd be walling off this entire section here that would be actually really really good for us but uh not today Oh yeah, ASCII water is uh, or or seas are really really cool. That's true. I mean, I'm I'm reading a lot of let's plays um, on the forums and the like. They they have so many cool things going on there, and therefore I I do see my fair share of um, of of dwarf fortress ASCII, and I'm slowly getting into it honestly. So, what is an isden? Oh, oh, an artifact instrument. Oh boy, that's probably even been worth the whole pain. Because uh, honestly, this should provide some serious feel goods. So, and it's worth twenty six thousand bucks. Damn. The next time we have to staff out a uh, a. Oh, wait a sec. Is it that that the, the important question is? Is it a furniture instrument or a or is it not that's the big question there it's not <laughs> damn it <laughs> so well i think it will make everybody particularly happy involved in any um in any uh thing there but i don't know i don't know how this works exactly anyways enough about that so let's see we fetched up well, not that much tetrahedrite as of now. I mean, here, this C, this is what you're talking about. I mean, this is looking rather boring, I think, personally. But uh, in ASCII, it has its person, it has uh, some charm here. That's true. So, the surface trees have regrown. Oh gosh, have they regrown? My goodness, there's a lot of wood forest available to pick up. That's really, really nice. Oh man, this is going to give us uh, some some serious metal production. Nice. All we need to do is get that tetrahedrite right back to the surface somehow. What are we gonna get there? That's what all the wheelbarrows are good for. But what's annoying me here? Oh, that's damn rock here. Jeez. Um, what's annoying me here particularly is that all the uh, tetrahedrite right is very um, scattered. It's really hard for me to do one uh, one focused mining ops. And as you see there, when we go upstairs, it's again damn rock. So that means <laughs> I cannot even mine properly here. Oh man, this place comes with a lot of uh, really hard problems there. I, I gotta say, this is one of the most uh, challenging geological formations that I've encountered so far. I mean, I don't have that super much experience with the game, but, uh, you know, a couple of hundred hours and uh, 10 or 12 uh, fortresses I did build already, and it's nothing to sneeze at. So, we got all the apartments here already, and I I don't really want to increase the density of this uh, environment here, so let's instead start building on some citizens' uh, districts here as well. Because, you know, we, we cannot uh, press everything into that one 
uh, level. I don't think that's going to be a smart decision after all. So we're going to put up some some apartments here as well. Because I can already foresee that this level is not going to get used too much by the craftspeople. And with a new influx of ever more people here, I want to be really expanding before it's uh, growing above me, you know? I always love to be ahead of the expansion. I mean, we are we are only 80 dwarfs away from the maximum capacity of this, so I'm quite happy to see that. Yeah, I, I saw that. Uh, I saw that, Sif. I, I just uh, wasn't ready to, to face that yet. I, I really love the tile set of this game here as it is. I really like, uh, I really like how it looks. I, I personally find it very, very adorable. So... Chalk blocks are down on the list now. Ugh. Whatever. Okay. So, introducing some more apartments here. I'm pretty happy to see how quickly this place is growing, but at the same time, I keep a keen eye on my food stockpiles, which are actually lowering and lowering. That means we probably need to bring up some more farming there. So, let's see. I mean, this shouldn't be too much of an issue. I mean, maybe our our cloth production just needs to kick back into gear. I mean, we are making bags after all. So probably, probably it was just because I forgot to do the processing that things didn't work out as intended. And we do keep a terrible backlog of these things, so let's see why that's happening. It seems to me as if we'd have a, uh, a configuration problem here with these stockpiles, and I think I already saw the culprit. So we got to allow meat in there. There we go. This, uh, the meat is always rotting because they don't know where to put it, basically. That's what's happening there. And the refuse stockpile is... Uh, overflowing. That's also nothing new. Ooh, wait a sec. That was not my intention. I meant to expand and not to overwrite. Good. Yeah, the fortress stinks. <laughs> oh yeah, um, speaking about the music, you guys should definitely uh, check out Simon Swerver, um, the name that uh, is uh, shown here. This guy did amazing music and even way more of the same dwarvy vibes on on youtube check this guy out uh, subscribe his channel he's doing amazing work there's so much more super amazing uh, music out there i i can only recommend strongly so let's see I know what is happening. My fine meal production order is limited at 500. So it is time to put up the lavish meal order, which goes all the way up to 2000, because that's usually what I like to do. 2000 meals is what I like to have in store. This is a stockpile for, I think, if you see, Every dwarf eats two meals per season, and you have 200 dwarfs, so is this enough for five seasons? This isn't insanely much, but it is enough. You could go for much higher stockpiles, of course, but I personally think of it like that. You got to store that stuff somewhere, you know? It doesn't store itself. And you got so many things to have to store here. The cook is fighting, the war dog is fighting, that is not good. We have a troglodyte in the base, don't we? Or uh, is the troglodyte here? No. Why is the cook fighting and with whom? So the cook was fighting down there. That was happening. All right. Whatever. It seems to be resolved. So. 
Well, I'm okay with that. Let's check back with our hospital, though. I think I need to increase the size of it. It's a little bit weird to have my hospital here in the middle of the workshops, but uh, it works, so I don't matter. We will relocate it at some point in the future, I think, because I don't like to have my hospital like that, especially with the uh, with the possibility of lycanthropes uh, in invading our base one day. But uh, speaking about lycanthropes, let's put up a rope and chain in front of our uh, fortress here like that. And uh, war dogs are trained. Beautiful. <laughs> Good night, Sip. I know that feeling, man. Um, you need to wait until this uh, person is uh, voting for citizenship, um, ARPA AI. You, these people first, they, they uh, ask you to stay at your city for entertaining people or killing monsters, but there are no false citizens up until then. Until in that stage, they'll just do whatever they want to do. But as soon as they are... Um, as, as they petition for citizenship, which happens after a while if they stay long enough in your city and don't die, then they will go into the roster just like every other dwarf here, and then, only then, you can assign them to whatever job you want to. Basically, you just need to stay patient with that person. That's uh, the gist of it. So, why are the quarry bush leaves not getting processed? So, process plant to back is happening. I just don't seem to have enough workforce. So, obviously, we should set up some more farmers workshops here. Let's do this, why not? And even in the middle of the floor, I don't care, because farmers workshops can never be target of... Um, of strange moods, so there's not really a big risk involved with that. Ah, that issue. Oh yeah, I can help you with that, Arpa. I now understand what your problem is. So, how about setting up a, um, a paper industry for our own fortress real quick and then I'll get to the point what I think is the problem for for you. So we're going to set up a kern. We're going to need a screw press. It, it just comes very fittingly because we, we don't have a library yet and a library is always a nice place for people to chill out at. So we're going to put up the screw press over here. Why not? And with that comes the big chunk of work orders. So we have plant processing, but only as long as we have more than 10. That's the deal. So we're going to go on over to the kern, where we mash plants into slurry. Until we have three pieces of glob. But only... Yeah, that's okay. And you do that only once because we don't need that extremely much paper. So screw press is going to press plant slurry into paper sheet for us until we have 10 paper sheets. That's totally enough for me. Then we're going to make rock scroll rollers and scrolls and choirs. I'm usually not making any codexes until they are fixed, because for now they are sadly not really useful. That's uh, because they are actually not really increasing the the value of the of the book. It's a little bit bugged, you know. So scrolls you, we're gonna make until we have five choirs. We're gonna make until we have also five. Okay, so this should be should be doing the trick. Now we need a room that's going to be the library for us. So. Let's see. Yeah, I need to assign more bedrooms, but I think this can wait for the moment. So, let's check out 
Oh yeah, I do like the idea of that. Look at this place. Isn't it the perfect place to carve in a room? And that's going to be the library of this fortress. Um, the uh, choirs, they have more pages. And uh, scrolls, they have less volume. So basically, the um, as far as I understood it, the choirs will have more value because there's going to be more pages written on it, while the, uh, the scrolls, they have less volume. That, that's how I understood it, at least. I don't know if that's uh, properly uh, explained, but I think that's pretty much it. So we're going to set this up with mudstone blocks or now and then I think I don't have any bookcases made so let's change that real quick so rock bookcase let's make two of these and uh, now then we're going to need to chairs and tables to make the magic work so let's make two here I want to have two on the opposite side of the room. No, not the claystone one. So, there we go. I'm pretty sure that you did everything like I'm doing here already, Arpa just doing the uh, parts that are necessary first. So the bookcase and the last part is the chest. And now the uh, unconventional thing that I'm doing is I'm going to install a lever, actually two. That's something that is going, the levers are going to fix your uh, scholarly uh, things problem. Okay, so let's assign that thing here to the library. I like the shape of that one. It's fitting into the uh, citizens' district really, really nicely. Okay, so next step, we need to assign those uh, people we want to have as scholars. So a legendary mechanic. Oh, I like the idea of that. He's going to produce some sick mechanic books. And uh, we're going to set up a second dude, Clark. Um, critical thinker. Hmm. That sounds like fun too. So, next thing we do is we get on over to the levers and we assign these levers now to our scholars. So, one to Udil, and you assign them like that to pull that lever permanently. It's a little bit weird, but it works. And uh, we assign that other one to Atir and do the same thing. And uh, oddly enough, they will now go, now go there and be scholarly, because they like to focus on that. on that sweat here. Ponder reproductive behavior. It works a charm. So, I don't know why it works. I really don't, but it does. Look at him go. Discuss the wheel and axle. And uh, it still does take some time until they start actually start, uh, until they actually start writing books. But uh, this is the best way that I've found so far. So, kudos to the uh, to the Dwarf Fortress Wikipedia. So, my friends, I need to refresh my tea. I'll be right back. Alright, so, food stockpiles are pleasantly increasing, and uh, let's check on out, this guy is working furiously already. So what do we have here? The hunter is taken by a fey mood at the metalsmith's forge. This might result in a legendary uh, smith of kinds. That is already a pretty, pretty interesting venue. So. We are going to go for some radical measure here. I'm going to smell tetrahedrite repeatedly. 
That means all the stuff that I got is going to get molten down into copper and silver because I, I really feel like doing this now simply because I, I want to staff out a second military squad. I want to be able to fend off enemies from above and below. I don't think that there's going to be too many sieges for Fortress Revered because I checked out the environs and um, you know we are very far away from any goblins and there's not even a single party at war with me. The closest goblins are these pits up here. That's the closest uh, to us. So all in all it's it's pretty good. I don't expect too much trouble, but uh, you never know. So Arpa, I hope that uh, that helped you with the uh, scholars. Let me know if you have any other troubles with the topic. I'm always eager to help. And that goes out to any other question to Dwarf Fortress. I, I did a lot of tutorials on my YouTube channel and uh, yeah, I love explaining stuff. That's all I can say. So a Billon high boot. He's claiming it as a family heirloom. I don't care because that guy is now a legendary armor smith. Boom. Just like that. You can keep that boat, my friend, because you're cracking out more than enough other legendary stuff for us from here. So that's going to be really good. Nice. Just when I was starting to uh, go for a new set of items to get forged. Wonderful. So we're going to make the um, weapons for that squad now first. So I don't like to do this, you know. Copper is a very, very, very inferior metal compared to pretty much any other metal in the game. But it's also, when you are counting bad metals, it's the best of the bad metals, you know. So the, oh look, they got a uh, scholar-student relationship now, those two. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, Dan, it must be because of the uh, animal, um, animal person tax, sadly. I, I gotta admit, I don't have too much experience with that, but if you cannot force them to do it with the methods that I've shown you, then I would assume there is some uh, something about the beast people not uh, not being able to do that. But uh, when in doubt, I'd be recommending the Discord or the uh, Reddit community. There's a lot of co uh, good uh, places to ask those questions to people that actually played the game way more than I did. Although I'm... Um, I, I consider myself pretty much an, in, an information sponge. What is that noise? I've never heard that. Cavern dwellers. Okay. Cave swallow woman. Okay. So, that's an underground invasion, as far as I understand things. But, uh, well, we got a fully armed squad of... Uh, of, of dwarves here, so let's see how that'll play out. It seems as if the attack is already gone, because if I remember correctly, this uh, sound was... Uh, yeah, it, it would have been a red mark here. I think I had that once, but I didn't notice the sound. A library snake. Yeah, the idea sounds terrific. I totally understand how why you wanted to do that. And uh, apart from that, what got me curious about uh, your uh, your project there is what other books animal people could be producing. Because I'm always uh, super intrigued by those fun titles those books have, you know. That's, uh, for me, always one of the most fun parts about this game, to, to read all of those... Uh, in fascinating procedurally generated things that the game uh, produces. So I really want to be careful with damp walls here. We are on the water layer. 
you know, uh, the other water. <laughs> well, what I'm trying to say is, I'm afraid that we might be uh, flooding this entire place because we're tapping some underground lake. That would be a little bit bad. All right, just trying to carve out some more tetrahedrite for the fortress. So, we got kittens. Let's take care of the... There's only one kitten, all right. <laughs> Societies of animal people. Don't underestimate that what's happening in your fortress is also influencing your scholars, so... Holy crap! What do we have here? Grey langors. Giant rats. Oh boy. We got quite some stuff. So we could we could uh, imprison or we could start training those... Uh... Oh, we can train a lot of these actually. Hmm. But we're not gonna. We're going to kill them and eat them. Or, although I gotta say, technically it's a lot easier to uh, just uh, outright slaughter, train, and then slaughter them out of the menu. What I'm doing here is a uh, very lengthy workaround. But uh, at the same time, I. I find it quite fancy to get rid of my uh, guests like that. So, here we go. Gotta free up those cages, you know. It's really important. And it's also providing some training to your people. Unironically. Combat training is valuable, way more valuable than any um, than any sparring or any training. They gain, as far as I understood things, way more experience when they're actually killing stuff. So it is uh, totally worth the effort, you know. So. All right, I I haven't. Uh, the the wildest things that I did so far were um, getting some human, goblin, and elves into my fortress, and uh, that was already uh, pretty easy, nothing too special. But when I read about the uh, the values of uh, of goblins and the like, I was uh, pretty shocked about uh, how how low their uh, their ethics are in general. That explains a lot about these people. You know, so here we go. Some real enemies. Ish. Let's see if they still have loot. So they come. Here comes Bismuth Bronze Spear. That's actually a pretty good item. Iron Spear, Bronze Shield. Yeah, they they actually come with uh, not the worst gear. So, there's one more Langour. I I think I'm going to keep that, uh, that rat, though. Giant rats, you know, giant animals in general, they're pretty cool. So, we're going to do the training there. And kill off the last of these buggers. I mean, the good part about that is uh, we're uh, going to get quite a nice amount of uh, leather out of that. So just like I hoped, the uh, industry is working out really decently. Okay, so we got the battle axes done, and uh, these madmen here are still smelting tetrahedrite ore. So let's see how many copper bars do we have. 77. So I wish I could tell them to just stop because we got enough, but I won't because we don't have enough yet. So these guys, they're going to make even more charcoal for us. So this ain't enough. Burn that wood, turn it into coal. We need that. 
because we're going to um, make us now some new set of gear. And uh, I'm going to do something I usually don't do, but if I have a legendary armor smith at my disposal, I would be foolish not to do this. So, um, where do it? Uh, where is it here? I have even two legendary armor smiths. Hell yeah. So, this guy is going to get bound to this uh, forge now, and uh, we are going to forge us now a set of copper gear. So, 10 copper helms. 10 copper breastplates, 10 copper mail shirts, 10 copper gauntlets, 10 copper greaves, and 10 copper high boots, and 10 copper shields. There we go. So that's the whole shopping list here. It's a one-shot order. And uh, we're going to get that done by a legendary armorsmith now, which is going to be as good as it gets. Alrighty. Just gotta remind myself that I uh, stop that designation later. So we're going to put up one stray war dog here at this spot. Because I personally love to do this. This, uh, you know, this is the main entrance to my fortress, and having a war dog here is securing me from lycanthropes as good as it gets. So, because there's a decent chance that they get sniffed out, and therefore the cage traps will usually do the trick. At least the last couple of times I had problems with lycanthropes that actually set it down this way quite easily. So, let's set up the new barracks and set up the new squad. So, I don't have a Captain of the Guards squad as of yet, because, um, reasons. <laughs> no particular reasons. We should, we probably should do that now. So, we're going to set up this party of heroes I'm trying to pick up jobs that are particularly unused in this fortress, like Dyer and uh, that and all these. Peasants are always good. Sigan. I, I, I think Sigan was one of the peasants that I uh, actually unemployed because she's a mother. So let's uh, be careful with that. Animal Dissector. Hunter. Ushrir. Um, no, I, I remember that name too. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was, um, let's take the Thresher, that's a replaceable job. Alright, the Golden Hold, no guys, that, you can't keep that name. The Triangular Knives, the Tin Savants, the Helm Throwers, the Remarkable Basements, the Cavernous Boards, eh. Come on, the hammers of forever, fortunes of inking, the stormy abbeys, why not? That's better. So, can you guys at least have some sort of a symbol that's actually legible? Thanks, guys. That's better. Okay, so last step is going to be the training for the, these guys, and uh, let's see. They're going to grab whatever they can get. And uh, whatever they can't get, they'll grab later. Asanda! Yeah, I'm back to Twitch, that's true. And I don't plan to go anytime too soon, in case you were wondering. So, there we go. Elk birds. So it seems like we, uh, we get any form of pest that's uh, meandering upstairs there into our cages and as it is right now I think I really need another volley of cages so we do have enough wood to uh, get that done so let's assign a new round of cages there we go also I think I need a new carpenter's workshop here So we're still not building that castle on the sea that I imagined, but, uh, you know, getting there. I would be, it would be my pleasure. 
always happy to, met, to meet and catch you folks, as you all know. So, let's complete those bedrooms. We're at 128 people and counting. I'm pretty sure that the next uh, flood of migrants will hit this town rather sooner than later. And, uh, oh yeah, we need to take down those birdos, don't we? So, sadly, I won't be issuing this order to the Stormy Abbeys. Because I find that, uh, you know, they aren't fully geared and I'm a little bit uh, concerned about their well-being. So I'm going to send the rather experienced Dreamy Walls, which are just, uh, you know, as you see there, they're just, uh, it's just like a truck rolling over, uh, over them. But it's okay. Look at that! Is this guy actually recovering? Is my... Is my stone crafter... Yeah, well, he's still haggard. But, uh... Well... Probably... Yeah, well, most of the time they don't really recover. They just have a, uh... Sort of a, uh, recovery. Okay, let's smack those birds. There we go. The best part about it is we are producing a nice amount of leather and other valuables while we're doing this. But I do realize one thing, my total drink count is depleting. We are not staying on track with our production there. So let's see. We got only one still, now that's uh, probably already one culprit, so let's uh, change something about that. This place is really crammed, but I can't change it. We have just too much aquiferous stone here, limiting our, our movements here. So, and the other thing we can do is... Uh, Let's see, do we have already two planters? No, we don't. So I'll set up a second one. So the field work is getting done a little bit uh, faster. And last but not least, we're going to set on up some more farm tiles. One for plump helmets and one for sweet pots, because obviously we don't have any of these yet. And these uh, expand my beverage assortment a little bit. Hopefully that'll uh, help to balance things out a bit. There we go. To give us now a immediate boost to our stockpiles, we're going to go for some forage next. Wonder what was, uh, what that sound was about. So we're, oh, yuck, there's a lot of vomit there. Um, we're just going to scour whatever is on, uh, up there. We could technically also pack up a entire um, foraging zone upstairs, but since we are sitting in an evil biome where there's where it's raining constantly bitter sludge, I'm not that much of a uh, big fan of that uh, of that thing, you know. Okay, I've emptied the cages. We should be fine for the moment. Let's see. Probably the whole problem was just uh, in not enough workspaces. Good chance, good chance that we were already actually producing enough, but I'll not leave that to chance. Let's make that a third workspace. You know, just in case. What's happening here, actually? Do we not have any mudstone available anymore, huh? I guess we used it all up. It's uh, looking pretty typical. So. Here shows our, you know, this this place here is really, really challenging. We we need mudstone, but at the same time, 
I really feel as if we are going to have a lot of problems to carve out enough stone for all the projects that I have in mind. Like, I was recently wondering, how the hell are we going to build a castle? With, with which stones are we going to do that? You know, at this very point, I'm, uh, I'm considering to build this castle out of glass. Because glass is actually a material that we have endless supplies of. We only need would need to bring up uh, glass smelters. But you know, there's magma around the corner. We just need to uh, get rid of the plump helmet men guarding it. Yeah, well, there's a lot of weirdness going on here. But we're going to brave it one, one adventure at a time. Okay. But I'm very glad to see that we're uh, we're getting closer to staffing out a second squad. Let's see. Here we go. We're already getting closer. So let's see how the situation is. Okay, here's something toppled over. So copper bars, we're down to 22, and coal, we're down to 2. Okay, we need we need new material to work with. So the wood furnaces need to be cranked up once more. We do need fresh tetrad, right? But if I, uh, if I checked out correctly, we are already producing some. Not too sure if that's going to suffice, though. So, farmer's workshop was toppled by... Okay. Whatever. It's okay, dude. He toppled that one here, and, uh the staircase so we got fresh cave swallow people all right we've uh, found another deficit of uh, valuables here that's pretty cool but obviously no further metals except for here all right that's going to go off go on. That's going to help us. Good. So... We do need those stones, nevertheless, too. Just a little bit impatient to see them carving out the the ore bearing rocks. I mean, I could configure them by all means, but uh nah. don't want to go for a bad micromanagement actually. Okay. The worst part about this entire operation will always uh, be the expansion down here because we're so close to the uh, to the caverns here constantly that's a big challenge of this place it truly is but at least we're going to have two squads entirely staffed out with uh, copper gear I mean it ain't the best but it's still a lot better than no gear you know Okay, there we go. Nice. So the drink stockpiles are not really rising so far. That's uh, not giving me a good feeling here. But it should be more about the workforce than anything else. Because the uh, amount of farms we got is really more than enough. So we don't have any limiters on that, okay. 
So, do we have anybody here uh, on, on sentence? No. Alright. So, we cannot smelt anything, obviously. And uh, we're lacking a couple of items, but let's check out how, how far we can take it with the equipment for these uh, fellas. So, yeah. Obviously, we are good except for three people already. That's good. So, I'd say... These guys seem to be quite ready for me to go for... Um, cage cleaning duty. Yeah, that's looking quite nice, doesn't it? All right, we're just lacking a couple of high boots here, so that should be doable. So let's uh, put some manual jobs in here. Five times should be more than enough. Let's see, charcoal making jobs are still not through, so we don't need to set up new uh, new jobs here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to chop some more trees. Luckily, our biome has restored itself now. And uh, I think it's also going to be a good moment to set up a uh, stockpile for armor and, uh, and weapons. There we go. Just so that stuff is not uh, lying around on the floor anymore, you know. It's uh, not really necessary. Good! So... Hey, look at that. Our first rat has been, uh, has been trained. Okay. Alert. Elves. We're going to leave them alone. Hey, look at that. Our military pretty much did that. No, not pretty much. They did that completely by themselves. I didn't need to do anything about that. They uh, came on over there and uh, laid the smackdown on that uh, person. Okay. So we're taking care of the people that we don't want to have downstairs there. There's a... Uh... There we go. This is a good training for those guys. Because I already know how these things work. And uh, it's really important that our dudes are used to the combat experience of uh, seeing people die and all. This lowers their future stress by a lot. When they're already used to that kind of experience, you know. Oh, whoopsie. Sorry. And it's rain and bitter sludge again. Does it ever stop? Good. Ah, sorry. Okay. We're through with all the production orders, so it's about time to get that one go uh, going, and we got them. So, squad number two is ready to go. And uh, our stone crafter is not in good shape. He's uh, frequently losing his mind, sadly. So I think the giant rat is now uh, ready to be to be put to somebody. So let's put it out of its cage, I'd say. Or do we? No, we don't. I don't want to have that right now. Not another thing that I cannot uh, control properly right now. No, no. Already got enough uh, 
enough of uh, these things here. So we have another another dwarf in a uh, strange mood, and we still have not enough booze being produced. So let's see. What's the matter with or with or booze jobs? So cancels drink. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. It's a lack of plants, clearly. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that these new harvests will solve a lot of these problems, but until then, we need a more... a more prompt solution. So we are going to harvest some some goodness here out of the, out of the caverns, you know? Hopefully that will help us out over the time until the next harvest is in. Okay, so, uh... That one's working out already. Nicely. And a crossbow. Now, that's at least something we actually can do. Without any problems, so... Let's do this. Oh, damn, I totally forgot to, uh... To set up a bow year here. Well. So, oh yeah, I know what's happening here. I know what's happening here. The kitchen is allowed to uh, cook with booze, and uh, I, I, I now understand what's happening. The moment the food stockpiles have hit two thousand. This uh, problem will stop being a problem. That's what's happening here. An avoca uh, avocado wood bracelet. Good job, good job. I don't think that anybody could care less about that. So, if I'd be not so close to hitting 2000 right now, I'd be... Uh, I'd, be I'd be stopping uh, the permission for that. But... Uh, since the problematic almost ruled itself out, I'm not too much of a, uh, not too much in in, her, in trouble anymore. So let's see. Some of these should be ready soon, and more migrants are oh, great. So this is looking rather um, worrisome, honestly. So, let's see. Let's put up two people for that job here. But like I said, the moment that we are... That we got 2,000 uh, pieces of food, that's the um, amount I ordered, should be no longer drink should go up again. If not, well, then I, I don't have any clue. And we're doomed. Ah, just kidding. I don't think that there. There's any problem happening anymore now. So still going to send out my herbalists to uh, gather whatever they can gather. Because, you know, why not? So my refuse stockpile is still not getting not getting uh, getting all that clutter under control. <laughs> Good God. So well, let's see how this plays out now. So, I'm going to uh, change that job now, in this uh, manner, and uh, we're going to rewrite that, and now they should be stopping that job for now. And a Forgotten Beast has come. Why is there a 
part of a cave swallow person. So beware of its fire. And it's uh, luckily not going to be on our, on our cavern layer as far as I understand things. So the ranger guild is requiring more, is requiring a place now. Good lord. Could you guys just stop begging? <laughs> Alright, so why are you still cooking lavish meals? You're not supposed to. Stop it. So I'm going to put an end to this madness for a moment. So they stop hogging all the drink from everybody. So... I didn't expect it to get that close now. I mean, it can't take forever at that point. Ah, oh, yeah, here. Hey, wait a sec. So... Yeah, that guy is carrying a lot of plants that we're going to transform into, uh, into booze. Or at least that's the plan. So... This is way more dramatic than I uh, expected it to be. I don't like this. But I think we are fine. Yeah, we're fine. I mean, it's going to be only a matter of time until now the uh, next uh, harvest comes in. And after that, we should be uh, finally okay with that. So, let's see. Oh yeah. It'll be fine. Damn. That thing is uh, worrying me. So... Ah, uh, nothing beats a small little cave fire underground, you know? So... I mean, if that thing would be able to kick down the door, I think it would have already done. So... There we go. Now the first harvests of plump helmets kick in again, and all the stuff that we gathered comes on in, so now the situation should bounce back. Although that was pretty close, uh, way closer than I expected it to be. Finally, the number of drink is bouncing back up. I mean, the these fields here are way more than I actually need to uh, to get entire uh, population through here. So we could try one thing. Probably, probably we we'll have some something uh, inside here that's uh, eating our our stuff. So let's do this little trick here. Do you ever have the impression that some problematic stuff is living in your fields? Just pasture some cats in there. They're going to take care of your problems. So all the flies and the stuff that's uh, hanging around in my planting chambers is now going to get killed. I don't know if they are actually an issue for the workers or, or whatnot. But if so, we're we're taking them down. Okay. So let's get back to that petition because you know, uh, otherwise I'll forget about it in a minute. So now Ranger Guild. Why ever we have so many rangers? I, I didn't even know that we got so many of these. 
but the more you know. So, we got a decent amount of silver bars by now, but not nearly enough. So we're going to stick with our mudstone guns. Okay. And I'm going to go pretty um pretty 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 soon offline because I I need a little bit of a break. It's already late on over here, but I want to finish this project here first because I know myself. Otherwise, I'll forget about it. The next time I fire up the game, I'll I'll totally will have forgotten that I promised those fine people here to build their farm, their uh, rangers guild. I totally know me. So we are going to go over here and do this. So, well, I actually had totally different plans for today. I thought I'd be doing fortress building and uh, in terms of uh, building my fortress on the, on the sea. But that didn't happen. Instead, we uh, brought up new military forces. I don't want to sound unhappy about that. So, finally, the drinks, uh, the drinks are going back up. Okay. I'm relieved. I'm really, really relieved. I was a little bit worried about that. Okay, so... Yeah, the guild hall. So I made a uh, one, one statue that's worth 3,000 bucks. It's that valuable because it has a super valuable gemstone in it. So, it's a very easy way to crank up the value of your buildings, like your uh, furniture like that. Okay, so I think this is good enough for it now. And, uh, well, you know what, we're going to slam in the, 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 the statue that's worth 3,000 bucks in there. Just to make sure that I can't forget that. That's the statue of dwarves. Alright. You know, I just want to be one step ahead of my uh, forgetfulness there. And you know what, we're just going to put up two of these because it's going to look nicer symmetrically. Okay, my friends, thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you're still around and I hope I'll see you all next time as well. If you're not following the channel yet, feel free to drop me a follow and uh, feel free to check out the YouTube channel of mine. There's a link to that down there as well. Be that as it may, have a wonderful day and see you guys all next time.